So, you guys don't really want to hear from me. My name's Emily Expo. I'm the mascot for the show, if you look at the logo. Um, I am not the interesting one here. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Misha Collins. So, who is it? So, he takes the keys, brings my car over there, uh, over to the stages, and, uh, and I drive away and the roof rack slides off. <laughs> because Jared had unscrewed. <laughs> um, which, frankly, I, I, mean, I, I had to sit down and say, look, shithead. <laughs> I could have fallen through somebody's windshield. Like, that's, not, that's not a great idea. And he agreed it wasn't a great idea, but didn't care. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of hijinks. We are childish and we're trying to counsel one another and to be behaving more like adults because it's kind of getting ridiculous. <laughs> we all got into, Jared Jensen and I got into a wrestling match recently, which, um, if, if, so if you're me in that equation, that's really stupid because they're huge compared to me. Um, I did very well. Um, but I was unable to pick up my child for about two weeks, so it was a little embarrassing. Um, 
still funny, but it was. <laughs> um, yes, no, anyway, so the question, I don't know what the question was, but um, I, I have a tendency to, um, one of the marks, I think, of a mature and seasoned actor is that they are able to not laugh during the scene. They stay in the scene, they stay in character, they don't break. I, I laugh at every opportunity while we're shooting, and it drives directors up the wall. Um, and Jared particularly likes to harass me while we're shooting a scene because he knows how easy it is to get me to break. And when, it, when a director, because directors are kind of like guest stars on the show usually, they don't, they're not there all the time, it's a new guy each week. And the directors get really frustrated, and they're like, just, just, just try to do it without laughing. And all they see is the monitor with just me laughing. They don't see what Jared's doing to me. <laughs> so you hear this exasperated, Misha, can you just, and you know, there's a room handle in my balls or whatever. <laughs> and I feel like, that's not fair. It's not my fault that this is happening. Um, but I, I just can't keep a straight face. And so there have been several instances where the final cut, what actually makes it to air is like, Cassio, uh, with a little smirk on his face, you know? <laughs> it's totally inappropriate because they just simply couldn't get the shot. And I, as, as often as possible, ask Jared and Jensen to leave the stages when shooting my coverage. Um, so I'll be doing the scene with Jared, usually, um, and say, Jared, could you please go to your trailer and talk to the prop girl instead of to Jared uh, for shooting his lines because it's easier for me to act against that. Um, I can, I'll keep talking if you uh, want me to. <laughs> does, it, does it ever hurt your, your throat like when you go into your cast? It, it, does. Does it, it does actually. Yeah, I'm sick of it. Oh. <laughs> I actually do literally get a sore throat. I thought that I was going to be doing you know, a couple of episodes. In the first episode on Supernatural, where my character appears, um, he's trying to talk to Dean. I don't know if you guys have seen the show, but. <laughs> trying to talk to this other character, Dean, and, uh, and when he tries to communicate with him, windows are breaking and, and television sets are exploding, and so I thought, oh, well, he should have like a really gravelly, rough voice when he takes on a human body, and then, and I thought, whatever, I'll just do this weird voice for a couple of episodes and then go back home, and then I never got to go home, <laughs> and I've been doing that voice for, for five years, and and it actually, I think it's causing some permanent damage. I might have, I maybe have like workers' comp or something. It's not a bad idea. So when did it become apparent that, that Castillo was going to be not only a regular, but integral to the story arc? Um, I mean, I think probably when we started shooting the first thing. About 30 seconds in. About 30 seconds. Yeah, we knew. <laughs> actually, no. The first time, the first take we did of the scene, the director, Kim Manners, who's also a producer on the show, who's passed away since, but he, uh, he was sort of like the, the godfather of the, of the series. And he, uh, he came up to me and said, uh, let's let him do that again. Try not to, I don't know what you're doing, but try not to act so spooky. And <laughs> so I don't know what I brought to it in the beginning, but apparently it was awful. And I could tell by his expression, like, we're not going to be keeping you along around very long. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I am still around, so. And uh, we, we were chatting earlier about you know, the story arc of where uh, Supernatural's gone and everything, and we were talking about theological accuracy in the show. <laughs> and uh, it was very interesting what, what the writers do in order to, to add to the show and, and, and the overall accurate accuracy of it according to, you know, uh, uh, Christianity and biblical thought and all that kind of stuff, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, I think it's, you know, they're, they're telling a the story actually to millions of people around the world, and I think that the writers feel like they have a certain responsibility to have a bit of integrity to reality. So, um, nothing that makes it to the screen in Supernatural is something that you can't Google. That's their litmus test. That is, <laughs> That's the bar that they're held uh, up to. So, so yeah. So you can pretty much be uh, guaranteed that whatever you see on Supernatural is is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all knew that, right? <laughs> so I know that you guys probably have a lot of questions. Uh, is there anybody who has something they would like to ask? Would like to say? Don't be shy. So. No. Nope. Okay. Great. We do have a microphone. There's a 
a lady in a beautiful pink shirt right at the back there. And there's another one with pink hair. Pink shirt, pink shirt. Supernatural. 
episodes? In purgatory. <laughs> Can we just have glimpses of me? <laughs> sure, absolutely. Um, I will break into the editing suite and <laughs> slip some liminal frames of myself, my childhood photos, perhaps. <laughs> they don't ever know. They don't really pay very close attention anyway now they are. So, uh, great idea. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Can you just pass it right to the girl next to her. Yeah. Hi. Hi. So, I, I think what she was trying to say, because <laughs> um, she stole my question, um, could you give us like any hints as to what's going to happen with Cass this season? Sure. Um, do you want me to tell you everything? Or? Yes, I'm totally down for that. Um, um, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, in, in, in Purgatory, we learn sort of definitively that that Dean is a, is a bottom. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that's enough spoilers for now. <laughs> yes, next question. <laughs> Beautiful lady in that red top and the belt. She's had her hand up forever. Hi. Hello. Um, so, can you tell us about the hug? Like, was that hard to film? Or, like, how many takes was that? The difficult thing? The hug? <laughs> the hug. <laughs> it was hard. It was very difficult to do because, um, uh, which one are we talking about? Between, <laughs> between uh, Dean and Cass, um, it was, I mean, it was, you know, as a professional actor, we just did it, got it out of the way. But the truth is, Jensen has terrible B.O. Um, so for me personally, it was something to sort of muster through, but, uh, but I did. Probably don't tell him I said that, but uh, thank you. And then the trench coat and the long hair. Yeah. Hi, Misha. Um, Hi. The just want to say the lights behind you kind of look like wings. <laughs> Into moving the house lights up and then down. And then down. <laughs> yeah, just right. Okay, so my question is after uh, Cass is like running around in purgatory and finally meets up with Dean, he kind of acts a little weird like when he meets Dean. Like he's kind of almost like terrified to see him. And we know that he's been running away from Leviathan. Yep. But he seems like he has a plan of like something that's going to happen in the operating and how Cass is feeling. Good. Very imperceptive. Um, no, but. Uh, <laughs> But I like your observation. Oh, uh, look, Castiel, he doesn't want to see, he doesn't, I mean, the, the answer is he doesn't want to see Dean because he's, um, Cass is a magnet for Leviathan, so it puts Dean in danger of being near Cass. And he also doesn't want to see Dean, um, because he's afraid he's just going to keep hugging him like that. It's, it's, it's too much, it's too much. Um, yeah, but then he does, he has another sort of, uh, Jedi going on that I'm not going to tell you about. Uh -huh. <laughs> there is a lady with her hand up and the black shirt. I'm going to go brace them up. Hi, Misha. Hi. I was just wondering, how do you take your coffee? <laughs> Without rat poison. <laughs> Thank you for dodging that one. <laughs> um, I kept on that. I was like, that's bad. Um, that has a double entendre. Um, so does that. Um, Do you like coffee? You know, I'm not a big coffee drinker, actually. I drink tea more. Yeah. A, yeah. I love that. Some guy was like, yeah!
What, uh, what are you getting at? Well, that's a great question. No, it's actually a really well thought out question. <laughs> what do you, well, how do you like your coffee? I take mine with cream and sugar. Okay, actually when you say it, it doesn't sound like anything wrong with it. Um, <laughs> I felt like I was walking into a trap and now it's clear that I wasn't. Uh, I was just confronted with a really stupid question. So, Not to call your question stupid, but it was. Um, yeah, so no, I actually go both ways because I can have. Um, sometimes I like it black and, and sometimes I like it with cream and whatever. Um, so, uh, great, so thank you. Moving on. So working with Jared, um, <laughs> actually, to be honest with you, I think that they're writing fewer scenes with the two of us together. And so if you look at the progression of, uh, since I joined the show, it used to be me, me, Misha and Jared did a lot of scenes together. Not so much anymore. It's usually like, all right, um, I'm going to run to the store to get some beer, says Sam, and then Dean and Cass discuss something. Um, whereas it used to be, Sam was part of the discussion as well, and uh, I think that the studio realized that's just costing us too much <laughs> in overtime for the crew, so uh, we'll send Sam for beer. Um, I don't know, there's a lot of different characters on the show um, that I have played as incarnations of cast, so um, some of those have been more difficult than others. I think that the... I don't know. Um, Crazy Cats was a little hard. That was hard to figure out because Ben Edlin was directing that and Ben, I think, wrote the episode as well. And Ben's crazy. Um, <laughs> Ben's a gene, like he's a, I don't know if you guys know who Ben Edlin is. He created the show The Tick and he's a, absolutely, his mind, his mind is this just amazing, unfurling flower of absurdity and poetry. I mean, everything that comes out of his mouth is amazing. Um, but it's a little schizophrenic too. So, um, so he, he, he I, I can't quite remember exact, exactly the direction, but he came out and, and said something like, so I want you to be really kind of, you know, maniacal and giddy and gleeful and, you know, you're just taking in all the wonders of the world as crazy cats. And we did a take like that and he came back and he's like, okay, let's try, you're really somber and serious. <laughs> play everything very inwardly. Um, so it was kind of like this roller coaster of trying to figure out what that character was. I don't know if I really got it, but it was kind of... You got it. All right, great. <laughs> there is a girl right in the middle here who's got the best hair. So I think she should answer the question. Where's our runner? Over here, she's there. <laughs> she's sauntering though, not running. No, behind you, behind you. You see, you see what I love the hair, right? Yes. Uh, in front of you, in front of you. Oh, yeah, we'll go for it. No, no, but I agree. Lovely hair. Is, is that natural, by the way? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, my question was more, like, you work a lot with Jared and Jensen, but, like, who's your favorite minor character to work with, especially over all the years? Like, the guy who plays Daph in his hands, who can feel to be looks. <laughs> like, those people that you don't get to act with as much. Um, uh, Julian. Um, is he as creepy as he looks? <laughs> yes, he's a good friend of mine, and I would say he is, in fact, far creepier than he seems on screen. Um, um, I don't know if I can Yes. You <coughs> Hold on. Um, no, we've had so many um, great characters on, on Supernatural. Um, I have actually become kind of friends. Where did you go? There you are. Um, please, keep standing. I would like to soak up the glow of your hair. Um, 
we've had some some great characters to work, actors to work with, but I've actually become kind of friends with several of the people who worked on the show for some reason because they're not good people. But um, <laughs> um, Richard Spate. Um, <laughs> It's like this weird little, um, weird little group of guys, Sebastian Roche. For some reason, we've become this sort of convention clique, and we go to all the conventions together. And, um, and uh, where are they? Why are they here? Well, I tried to avoid that if possible. Um, um, oh, I hate these people. Oh, Julie. James Patrick Stewart was cool. I really liked working with him. Kurt Fuller. This is fun. This makes it much easier. Than me. <laughs> Kurt Fuller, we, uh, he played an angel, um, Zachariah. That's, I think that's, cheap, that's me cheating with the name. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just reading you the list of the cast. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, it wasn't a satisfying answer, but whatever. We had our moment. Green hair lady. Or guy, I'm sorry, I can't see that far back. I'm a lady. I'm sorry, I'm not wearing my glasses. You guys are all like fuzzy. I'm not either. <laughs> hey, Misha. Hi. So, I was wondering if you would do me and my friend a favor and say, hey, ass butt. <laughs> Two children. 
I guess it was, um, I feel like I gave my best years up to the show. <laughs> that I'll never get back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, being up in Vancouver all that. <laughs> I lost a lot of really good friends.
you have one? Um, my favorite was probably, um, I don't know if this is hard to do. Probably, I don't understand the reference. <laughs> again, again, capturing the essence matters, so that's good. Well, um, happy birthday. Um, I hope that, uh, you, what, where do you go after this? Um, I go back to my house because technically my birthday party starts in about half hour. Are you invited? Um, should we all go? Oh, yeah. uh, uh, really? Yeah. So you're, this is, that's very kind of brazen of you. We keep all, all of the guests waiting. Go to my birthday party. I'm not sure when I'm going to get there, but I want you there at five. Um, I wasn't sure, like, I didn't know that you were going to come, right? So I was all oh, Additional birthdays. That's all, that's all we have time for. Okay, thank you.